tongue. Rock tongue body spray. Reach for it. Available at all fine singer superstores. Dragons do not do well in captivity. How do you know this? That's what I do. I drink and I know things. Hello and welcome to Propaganda on a Saturday as always, at least temporarily for always. We have one of our fan favorites, uh, one of the decks that we first brewed with and got kind of put on the map with because I, I think I 5 would a long time ago with something similar to this. It has changed so many times over the years and incredibly so lately because we have all kinds of new cards to discuss in white. In fact, Nim Chimsky and Shiraz in the house. Thanks for joining me, my friends. All right, so first off, our mana base. we got 21 lands, so this plays like we've got 17 basics. And that's probably all you would really need outside of the corpse skirt. However, we've got four Fengrafts, which allow you to not get screwed in theory. And then when you are flooded, you can do something with it uh, that is very non-white, which is get something back from the graveyard. Sometimes in the past, however, you'd nab a bodyguard. Sometimes you want a bodyguard, but most of the times you want an infect critter to come back with the Fengraft. So that's why I'm running all four of these now. Uh, Sentinel's Eyes, we can really fine-tune our graveyard so that when we trip Fengraf, it it hits what we want it to. Sometimes that can be a bodyguard. It's rare, though. Um, and so that's the only non-infect creature we've got is the bodyguard. And this this looks a little freshman sometimes. You think, like, oh, it's a bunch of four-ofs. I've really turned it into a bunch of two-ofs back into four-ofs because of uh, what we're trying to do here. We've got a protection suite, a bodyguard, all four Chow Mano. I truly do want to see this card almost every opening hand it's it's when you win and we're rounding it off with karametra's blessing as on top of that we have so many enchantments now that this uh, acts as kind of a white counter spell and a kill card out in its place was a mutagenic growth love the card sure wish i could play 64 but not going to do that um anyway we've got ethereal armor which you know shouldn't come of any surprise when you're running a lot of enchantments uh, for Sentinel's Eyes and for Solid Footing. So there's a lot of new white toys to be playing with here. This is amazing. The other, just last yesterday, I was playing against Burn. They fire blasted my Priest of Norns in response. I you know instantly gave it this, and it was just fun after that. Then they had some other other spell later, and you know blessing showed up, but it it was over because that's half of their life when this is a one five and it hits for five in fact. So anyway, Pelin in nineteen in the house. Shabazz, my name Chimsky. Joseph and Vista. Hey, everybody. Sorry, I'm a little late to uh, read up on the chat there going in backwards. We've got one Bone Splitter. I ran as many as four at one build. Um, but this deck, really, it's it's strange. It's like, you know, what's the problem with Infect? There's too much removal. Well, what is White good at doing? Stopping removal. So we've got uh, quite a few ways to do that. And even when uh, their removal goes their way, we've got Corpse Cur, which obviously is the best thing for Fengraf when the game gets going. And then you just start getting back Corpse Cur, Corpse Cur, Priest, and going like that anyway our sideboard's pretty fun we got two hollow there's a lot of removal that uh, hurts us one of the re other reasons i don't like to run mutagenic growth is uh it just hit us for two and didn't really save much uh, in a format where outside of maybe a disfigure a lot of uh, burn effects and such found hollow to be better it's great against affinity last breath is kind of our homage against um tron not so much denrova horrors what really kills you in tron but it's the uh uh, what do you call it? Stonehorn Dignitary? Well, at least be able to maybe EOT trick them a little bit if we got them against the ropes, which is pretty common when you're playing Infect and things like Pulsum Rasa don't have that double-sided uh, kick in the crotch, uh, being that we're, we don't care about their life total because we're playing Infect. So we've got two of those. We've got one of each room. This is good against Anglers. This is actually really good against just a lot of decks, including Tron, uh, not that, that you bring it in against them because they would just bounce it with Dinner of a Horror, but in theory, if their clock's running out, there's a lot of neat plays. And plus, I run the Ruins because we have so many, we have 17 basic planes, and if we're being really aggro and we're like one kill spell away, we just cycle it, and uh, all the Ruins can cycle for two, so it's, it gives them a little edge if you're running really heavy white against a, a tr traditional circle of protection. Uh, COP Green, obviously, when Stompy gets a little heavy-handed or a... Uh, Timberwatched Elf comes through. That's good. Red 
Affinity Burn. White, really good against Boros and uh, other variations. I've got two Prismatic Strands. Uh, with this Protection Suite, I think uh, three might be a little too much. Three Gut Shots and one Longbow is our um, plan D against Tron. It very rarely would, would go through, but and, you know, random other decks that are running like uh, Sporlock Frogs and stuff like that. Sporlock? Hey, that's a cool name. All right. Anyway, Tron's Last Breath this weekend. I don't know. You know, I meant to talk about that. Uh, I didn't mean to upset anybody if I did too bad uh, about <laughs> being online and, and, you know, everybody, oh, what about, what about, what about? And it's, it's really silly because imagine uh, just all you have to do with that scenario to get in my mode of thinking is say like, hey, what's the 2023 uh, ban list going to look like? It's silly, right? I mean, it's, it's a neat it, there's just so many mental mental things that you could spend your time on that are so much stronger than that. Then I don't know, you know, I don't work for Wizards. I think pe some people at Wizards probably are given a red herring or two to keep, you know, the uh, stuff from leaking out or whatever. I would, I'll tell you what I don't want to see banned is Bonder's Ornament. I think Wizards, it would be just like them to go, hmm, Tron's really powerful. Let's get rid of Bonder's Ornament. And it's like, that's not a problem outside of Tron, you know. So what do I want, Ben? That's a different question. And I've been over that ad nauseum, so I don't really want to slow down the uh, roll. We'll know this time next week, and hopefully we'll have a lot to talk about. That's where I'll leave that. Um, I hope it's like four or five cards, personally. So, um, yeah, it's, it's I don't know. It's it's up there with set reviews, in my opinion. It's just like, yeah, yep, yeah, get it. We've seen 15,000 people, and there were 16,000 between them. So, anyway, enough about that. We're going to just jump on in here. I think I have this set to say fast players and no quitters. So, Hopefully, actually, if they're playing Tron, though, I don't mind if they quit. That's all right. I should have put that in there, too. Put a little homage of, uh, oh, hey, where are we going here? That's the one I wanted to move, darn it. You know, I set these things before I begin, and boom. My oldest started playing uh, NBA 2K. He's Kid Clutch on YouTube, if you want to check him out. He's got a uh, cool little anime avatar theme going on and really blowing up, and it's been fun watching his channel just explode and take off, so... If you like NBA 2K or basketball or, or you're just curious about other games, check him out because it's awesome stuff. On that same note, oh, let me focus on this game real quick. All right, we got two late games and we're a little bit flooded. I'm going to mulligan this. I might regret that. We'll keep this. Boink. And we'll get rid of... I really like this suite. We'll get rid of the Kerr. We might be a little bit away from four. Um... If you guys haven't checked out the, uh, I think Shirazi might have that link ready, the Popper Players Podcast, uh, Frusile, I think, is the host of that. It's really slowly growing into, I think, the best podcast out there. I, I know you say that about Pop It Like It's Hot, but they kind of came and went. And really neat format. He just uh, focuses on the top tournament grinders, and Hellsaw's here this, or was in the episode this week, and I'm about 80% through it, and just highly, highly, highly recommend You probably can't spend your time better listening if you're trying to just download pure knowledge about popper than that so hey look who it is it's drawn maybe this will be the last week we we can say that right but yeah it's a uh, it's very very cool so i've heard rumor in the past that um and i don't remember what this was said but i just want to be completely honest that they weren't the biggest fan of me but i don't care doesn't mean it's a bad podcast i'm not gonna be petulant and be like they don't like me so i'm not gonna support them wrong it's an awesome podcast go check it out who cares what I, what i do all right here we are we've got some problems here we've got a little kitty cat that looks like it's infected with something what's that thing called that cat owners have it's it's some um i think it's a parasite that they uh it makes them a little more um reckless almost like a <clears throat> a shot of whiskey or something like that it's a it's an actual uh, thing that happens to cat owners it's a uh, i can't remember the name of it yeah which was at the top of my tongue. Toxoplasmosis. Thank you, Shirazavon. All right. Was well, good. I usually don't listen to podcasts, but I left one running when you whispered it to me. Sweet. Yeah, no, it's really cool. He's got a cool voice, too. So uh, it was just neat putting a voice to Hellsaw. You know, it's all these, all this time of, of the other going on. All right. Uh, let's, uh, let's drop this on. Well, actually, let's do this first. We don't really have much of a threat here. Maybe they've got a lightning bolt and they'll try to. This is just kind of our way of maybe baiting it. I don't know. We're probably going to just run into fog effects after this, so we've got to do what we can right now, which probably won't be enough against Tron, especially since they probably have it. It was just neat here, hearing it from the cat's mouth, too, as far as uh, Hellsaw goes with Tron and, you know, how 
ridiculous relic is and just kind of unneeded. Now this is the quandary, right? There's so it's so hard to guess what the hell is good against. I'm actually gonna say blue here. Let me say blue. There's so many blue creatures. And that way they'll have to bounce Chow Mano with a uh you know who, Denrova Horror if they get it online. So Hmm. Soft tackle in the house. Glad to be catching this live again. All right. Oh, and maybe next week, I'm thinking like maybe on a Wednesday or something, I might try to stream live just to YouTube just to see what it's like. Um, see my boy do it. It's a pretty interesting little community boost there. I don't know. I'm not guaranteeing anything. I don't want to burn out, but might be trying something like that. We'll see. I got to get a new backdrop too. I'm using an old cloak from a Dracula production I was in from like, I mean, this will date me from like, the mid 90s so it's like getting moth holes in it and sometimes the lights peeking through and so this morning it was this big to do about getting the sunlight because it's pretty sunny out here to stop pouring in and all right we're probably looking at a moment's peace turn here just dropped in to say hi alive and well and chilly unemployed and happy to be okay and enjoying your content thank you syscoms hey i'm with you unemployed here too i had the most frustrating week last week uh, last two weeks because uh, i had like three really good job offers Two went to interviews, one went to three interviews, and then they just ignored me. And it was like, I don't know what that culture is. I, the more people I talk to, the more that happens. They just kind of string you along and then just, eh. All right, so they got moments of peace. So my heart's out to all of you out there trying. I know it's uh, it's tough, very tough. I think just about everybody I know is unemployed right now. So at least we have this game to focus on and try to remain a little bit positive. I know I was drinking way too much when this whole thing started just uh, probably a lot of you you know you get kind of in that i don't know depression might be too strong of a word for it but you just get in that mindset and um kind of the who cares and so now i've been trying to focus on uh, giving myself a little bit of a i like to call it a quest goals are cheap goals are silly everybody has goals you want to go on a quest that's what knights do so uh, my quest was to not go on a diet either you know diets come and go stupid little fads and stuff like that i want to do a change lifestyle so my brother who's um battled weight for a, quite a quite a long time not not because he's naturally heavy or anything he's just had a lot of surgeries and stuff like that he was like getting within five or ten pounds of me and i was like okay that's not going to happen so uh he was raving about that new map and i, I still recommend it costs a little bit of money it's something i don't have right now but if you think about what you're saving on health and food and things like that I highly recommend it. I wish we were sponsored and I could get a little kickback, but hey, that's another life, right? I'm good on that one. It's a quest for yet another beer, says Soft Tackle. Yeah, no, 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 there's nothing against, against that too. There's always a time and a place. It's just the time and the place is getting a little too often for me. And, you know, when Mondays turn into Fridays and Saturdays and you kind of uh, you just got no governor on you. So I just had to, it was just a me thing, you know, bottoms up. It's just right now, I'm, I'm, as I'm trying to get down to like a, a steady weight, you know, it's like, well, I could eat a meal or I could, you know, have this drink. And it's like, well, I think I'm going to err on the side of eating. <laughs> so that, that side's been a little easier that way, but hey, that's not in their hand anymore. So that shrink slides down. My apologies for our opponent playing the slowest, most boring hated deck in all of Popper. I know one of you out there, um, one of my comments, or they, they quoted me from last week's show that, I said, or two weeks ago or something, I said, take that, you bane of the format. And I meant it. And I still do. All right. And here we've got this lock going on. And we don't really have a way out of this here. So uh, I'm, believe it or not, I'm just going to scoop here because we don't have a way out of this uh, main deck. And I don't want to spend a half hour trying to ad lib. We're going to go and give Crazy Cat the win, especially after listening to uh, the Master Hellsaw about Tron and how... He thinks it should have been banned probably six or seven months ago, like most of us. So we'll bring in the last breath in the longbow. Uh, Corpse Cur, if it gets there, we're kind of losing already. I'm not too worried about Corpse Cur there. Going to get rid of that. And um, probably a Sentinel's Eyes. I don't really... Uh, it's usually I cut one or two of those. Hmm. Uh, oh, that was me. Hello. Oh, Groovy Hut Lord. Yeah, I, I got a kick out of that. I was just like, did I say that? Because it's a running joke in my family. I got kind of diarrhea of the mouth. And if you haven't noticed, and uh, sometimes my friends or family will just be like, we got to write that one down. We're going to forget. And I'm like, I said that? Uh, probably missed my calling as like a radio host or something. All right, let's go. But on that selfish front, if any of you out there know of any good gigs or you need someone of my caliber, 
I'm not above saying, hey, give me an email, propagandagmail.com. Who knows? Maybe I'll get a job off of hosting propaganda. Wouldn't that be funny? Go full circle. All right, let's close this down for some screen real estate. But yeah, seriously, if you want to, if you really like uh, online basketball, and it's really it's really blowing up lately because, you know, there's no sports anymore and ESPN's trying to do their best. My kid, who I coined Kid Clutch, uh, it's got his own channel on YouTube, and uh, he's he's pretty awesome. Pretty good commentary, too. And he edits, so it's like a miniature version of propaganda. Check this out. Here we go. All right, all right. Oh, the undefeated mage Semikov. Yes. Yeah, he just quit his job. He was, he was miserable where he was at, and uh, it was more of a health thing, too. So he was just like... And I, I told him how grim it was out there, and he just, it's just how it rolls, man. Oh, nice, Ross, yeah. Yeah, his two-on-two -two games, I don't think I've ever seen him lose, but sometimes he'll get, all right, so we got a little bit of our sideboard here. We've got this, we've got that. Let's, uh, I'm trying to think what, what's more likely to get countered here. Well, this can come back, so let's see if we can do this first of all. I'll bring this out. I actually want to save the longbow. It's nice to have in hand here. And this way, our uh, Karametra's blessing. Will... We've got him on a two-turn clock here. I mean, even if he's got balance, we've got the bodyguard here. That's why I like to run four. A lot of lists, I don't think you should run four, but this one, you're really trying to harbor that one creature i really this show will be complete when i can show you the instant kill card in um solid footing on a priest of norn that which is what my card frame here is based on i've used this probably four times because this is one of our most requested decks to play <coughs> excuse me the blessing is cool white infect yeah yeah i was uh you know i was leaning on bone splitters and mutagenic for the consistency and I just, you know, the more I looked at it, it just started leaning more on the power protection level. And it was like, you know, that's what White's really good at. And burn matchups, neither here nor there. And I was like, I, I need that to be a lot better. And so uh, here we are. All right. Boom, ba -doom. Here we go. And we're off. And then I ran into a really slump, big slump with... Uh, uh, brute squad i was doing great with it and then i just really 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 crashed and burned i was like man oh man all right we're gonna put this out while we can so we don't have any counters we already got a bodyguard out so i'm gonna save this because i can always use it on their wall like if they're trying to bounce it so that's another reason i like four of these because it is kind of a tron card and you know little asterisks i wouldn't put it in quotes but maybe an asterisk yeah and i love this artwork just, it's like feral nature, just pissed off. And it's almost confused of the magic that's protecting it. It's like, I think it's rearing up because of the distortion in time space right there. Very cool. Who's the artist? Wins Fu Tan. All right. Let's, uh, let's do this. Whoop. Be cool if we can get one game against Tron. He's got one turn after this. Good news is if he gets his little... Uh, Super protection suite online. We've got Veridan Longbow, and so we've got him on a two-turn clock no matter what. Scratch that. This is Tron. Not no matter what. No matter luck, I should say. Yeah. So anyway, thanks for joining me, everybody, on this Saturday here. I know you got lots of choices with your uh, popper streaming stuff. Glad you chose us. Let me write down Tron here before I forget to take notes. 1L, 1W. Cross these off. There we go. And our first bathroom break today, we've got, uh, I call it the offensive ghost of St. Conan from Conan O'Brien's show, like way back, maybe 14, 15 years ago. We played it before, but I was like, oh yeah, I forgot about this one. Really fun skit. We're going to submit. Not much difference in uh, games two and three here. But it's a bunch of, it's like a crooner from like the 1920s ghost coming back to life. And then some others. All right, this is when I get really frustrated because we're playing 21 lands in a deck that could probably run 17 or 18. And then this happens. And look at this. Oh, it's so pretty. Uh, this is a Vegas hand. 
if you're new to pop again the vegas hand it's like oh look i can do this 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 this, this. It's like, yeah that's because you're only looking at one land and so there's all these options and you only hear the machines go off when you're winning mulligan imagine if vegas made a noise or the casinos did whenever you are losing people would go deaf right uh, what to do. So this is what I'm running into here sometimes with this deck. I mean, all decks do this, but this one, when you're really leaning on resources hard, I'm going to keep this. I'm going to throw out a bodyguard and just hope we top deck a... It's such a bad game plan right now because we, we need to top deck a uh, infect creature fast. Oh, at least they didn't drop a Urza land here. Maybe they just got counter magic for the one creature. We will draw. We'll see. Well, there's part of it. There's part of our little protection suite. <clears throat> And solid footing, you know, it's what's neat about it. I went from two to three to all four because it's so devastating when it works uh, because we have built in uh, vigilance in our priest. But, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> just swallowed something a little funny. But what's uh, really good is it, it it helps bring up armor to like lethal levels sometimes and surprise and that flash is really relevant. A lot of times people are trying to get the most out of their turn. Maybe they'll hard cast a electricery instead of uh, overloading it, and you're able to uh, have a benefit that stays around. That was another thing I was running into with mutagenic. A lot of times I'm using it on defense, and then it was like, all right, you just paid two life, and now you got a 1-1 one, one again, whereas these kind of, you know, they were the gift that kept giving. All right, let's bring out another bodyguard. It might be relevant. Now the best top deck right now is a priest, because then we can drop it and have double protection and then win the game pretty damn easy, so... It's pretty awesome. Looking at Deluxe's card frame, and you want to have a good recommendation for a good documentary on AI and the dangers of it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the uh, Elon Musk on Joe Rogan, the last few have been pretty good. I know that. And about every, uh, oh, I don't know, 20 games with this, especially with the ethereal armor over like a mutagenic growth uh, strategy or tactic, you're going to be able to kill with a bodyguard. They might get a little wanton with their life total and uh, go from there. All right, come on. This is our priest window. I wonder if that's been said today somewhere on the earth. Watching to Terminator 2, nice. Those movies hold up pretty good. I just watched uh, a, few, a couple months ago. I remember I was telling you all about Schwartzifying my youngest. I was showing him like Predator and, you know, all the like Terminator and Commando and just all the 80s just testosterone flicks and stuff. And. In that same ilk, I, uh, he's been really into Street Fighter Online, uh, Street Fighter 2, and so uh, I showed him Bloodsport and forgot what a... It held up a lot better than I remember. I remember being a lot cheesier than that, and uh, I was I was pretty tickled by it. Oh, boy. I think we could kind of go crazy here, but... Man, we really need something to go down. This one I regret not attacking the last two turns. Could at least imply that we maybe have some sort of semblance of an attack going here. All right, let's attack for four. Let's put a little pressure on them. I wish we would have uh, started them at 17 instead of 19, but what are we going to do? Oh, me too, Shiraz. Yeah, that and Rocky Four were like the two workout movies for me. I've got them like committed to memory probably, especially the soundtracks. I remember I was a big Transformer fan as a kid, and I... Every once in a while, just just uh, yesterday or the day before, I listened to uh, the Transformers soundtrack. I remember going to the theater and literally crying, like because you know all these characters I grew up with in these cartoon like father figures dying all in like a five minute span. Spoiler alert: if you're like crazy old and haven't seen it, it's on you. But um, it was just shocking. And then hearing the Mattel executives later or whatever that is, Hasbro. Um, talk about like oh we just they had no idea they no research nothing just killing off these beloved people left and right because they just had more toys to come through and they wanted to just kind of cycle through and uh, they were like what are these doing around so long let's get rid of them and, and uh, yeah that was the downfall <laughs> just remember but that soundtrack's pretty damn good if you like 80s cheese which I love it come on oh man this is frustrating all right well let's go uh Let's go for it here. Maybe they they're stuck on uh, they maybe they saw the uh, the um, what do you call it the um, the Verdon Longbow plan and, and it just left them terrified. So they're like, well, we can't we can't fog them. So maybe they don't have any fogs anymore. It'll be funny if we beat Tron without infect here. 
or turn away from doing it, they don't find their answer. Might be kind of fun to make them use it on on that. What's cool though is, uh, and I did this the other day with with Bodyguard and Sentinels. You can pitch it and then recast it, obviously. And get the benefit on your creature. Ethereal armor is a waste, but I've got to put a little bit of a clock on this guy. Otherwise, I mean, what if I didn't start attacking? Well, if I did, actually, we'd have him uh, dead next turn because he'd be at about six life, or she. I don't know. If I too crazy cat, I'm not quite sure of the chromosome count there. All right. Big UFC event for you fight fans out there. It's one of the few that we're going to buy. I really like Rose Nunez as a fighter. I think Andrade got very lucky last time. She was really dominating that fight. And it's what makes the fight game so exciting is it's just so... Just anything can happen, you know? Kind of like what's happening to... Well, no, I was going to say, as slow as Tron's been playing right now, I was thinking like they didn't hit Tron, but then I looked up and they got it. So never mind that. <laughs> All right. And another big shout out and thanks to Odin Makes. I've got my um, cool leather bound... Um, I don't know if you can see it here. Propaganda themed riveted leather. It's so cool because you open it up and, you know, you it just locks in with the clasps and stuff. It's so cool to play. Uh, and then the side of it, I don't know if you can see that. He, he did like these pseudo pages. So it's like this old leather tome. It's so cool. Dig it. I like the UFC without a crowd. Yeah, it, those crunches are pretty bad. Popper Bible. Nice. <laughs> Jose Vistia. I'm throwing in vowels where they don't belong. I apologize. Very true. I know. It's neat having something that's one of one in this day and age of just ordering everything on Amazon and it arriving. And it's very cool. I just like the smell of it. Who doesn't like the smell of leather? I got it right. Oh, yeah, but now I can't remember it. Huh. Well, what's the most likely plan that they've got some sort of thing? And it's probably an instant, but I have seen these decks running, um, let me, running a flame slash. So if they have an instant, they've got me either way, no matter what I call out. We're outside of lightning bolt range, so I'm going to call red here. Bum, ba, dum, bum, bum. Gonna be, this is going to be epic if we beat them with a bodyguard. It's almost insulting to the deck. It's like, hey, look, plan A and B didn't work. This is plan Z. Attack with the bodyguard. It's like the bodyguard that's like guarding like some very famous person and then he gets discovered and goes to Hollywood. <laughs> I have many leather-bound books at Shiraz. Very cool. All right, let's click real slowly here. Definitely not choose white. Oh, my God. I'm a dunce. See what I just did? I thought he was casting that and he was cycling it. Oh, well. We got him either way. Let's attack. And we've got the blessing for the uh, protection from play, even though we've only got the one. Leatherbound underwear. I would not recommend that. Let's do the solid footing plan here. With the help of ethereal armor, that will get there if we need it. Hopefully he's trying to do something to the bodyguard, but I'm pretty sure, yep, there's the plan. All right, well, the bodyguard zip didn't really uh, hurt us much, and we've got... Uh, Karametra's blessing back up still, so we're feeling all right. <laughs> they probably look great on you. <laughs> Come on, bodyguard. Yeah, this is this is foolhardy. Where is our infect damage? Now, uh, wouldn't it be funny if they took out... Now, that's interesting. They probably kept in the fogs, but they might have taken out uh, Pulsamarasa. Outside of just all that turns into is a pretty expensive um, exhum. Well, not exhum. Not sure where Little Fight's at today. I didn't get a message he was going to miss today's show, but I know he's been awfully busy. Let's see where we're going here. Din Roba Horror. Hopefully he chooses the bodyguard here. Instead of, all right. Hey, look at the blessing. It works. Doink. Too bad I can't make it protected from blue or red, right? Hey, maybe we'll draw into Chow Mano's blessing. Problem is, he's got moments peace. This deck's never out of options. They're probably just sitting on a flicker right now. Oh, if they did, they would have just done it in response. Horse farm. 
was one of the hardest jobs I ever had up at the uh, Lake Tahoe area in the National Forest, where power tools are not allowed. I had a job for one summer cutting uh, the trails for hikers. I was on a big pack horse. It's like a cross between a war horse and a Clydesdale. It was gigantic. Needed a step stool to get on that thing. About my only experience with a horse. Just one summer. All right, so this game's kind of over. I mean, Longbow's not really going to do much. Eight turns? I don't think so. Let's see. We can attack this turn. Now that's an emoji I've never seen, Shiraz. We're going into dangerous territory, says Nimchimsky. <laughs> Oh, what's wrong with the Maverick Girl? I'm I'm pretty uh, ignorant on a lot of uh, to dos with uh, you know what? Let me um let me trip this now. Well, let's not do it now. Let's do it end of turn. I'll trip it and grab uh, Benevolent Bodyguard. Yeah, Arabians. That's mostly what everybody rode in the uh, medieval club that I was belonged to in the mid to late nineties, but. As far as writing, it was only the big ones. About the last video she posted on YouTube. You have to be a little more clear than that, Jose. I sometimes I don't only see things when I, when they're right in front of me, or somebody immediately uh, sends them to me. So let me bring this ability up here so we can see it a little bit better. Hopefully, it's not health related. And she's fine. I got to meet her at PTLA. That was pretty cool. I think, along with uh, you, know them. You know him as the professor, but I call him the Twitterer. <laughs> that guy was just twenty four seven on that thing. All right, I'm gonna quit here. Concede. Doink. And that's how you lose to Tron. But every deck does that, except other Tron decks. All right, we're just gonna run right off into. Match two. I could have played that maybe a little bit better, but I don't think anything really cost us a um, a game. So now I might quit if it's another Tron matchup, just because I just saw that. Now that's uh, when there's zero critters on the uh, infection front, and that that's very frustrating. So yeah, against Tron, about the only thing we've got really is um, Last Breath Tech, and uh, I might want to bring this up and our Longbow, but helps we've got 18 creatures 14 of which have in fact the other four are protection from spells so not the best freshman outing or, or a, a maiden voyage i should say so my chat got real quiet here is everybody uh googling what what happened or who knows um i already said that dun, 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 dun. did i get an opponent while we were waiting no Struggling a bit with anxiety and not feeling so enthusiastic about magic. Oh, yeah. Well, hopefully Monday I'll be uh, some upheaval and we'll do that. I'd be lying to you guys if I if I said I, I haven't been there, you know. Sometimes you get you get in kind of a rut or whatnot and stuff. But I'm always trying to be a bit of a cheerleader for the format. <clears throat> yeah, I want to play first. So when you put as much work and editing to it, and then you just fall on such deaf ears on the wizard side of things, it can get a little disheartening sometimes. But you got to focus on the folks. Man, oh man, we're drawn really poorly here. We were flooded, and now we don't have a theme. And we saw what happened last game when we tried to draw into it. I'm going to mulligan one more time because we're running 21 lands. Hopefully we get flooded so we have easy pitch options. Yeah, you're right, Soft Tackle. That might be, I'm sorry, I'm reading in reverse again. That might be a thing, like if you're playing a challenge this weekend and you don't like Tron, probably a bad idea. They might really be trying to grind out. You might see a big uptick in opponents like Hellsaw, which good luck with that. Mulligan. Come on, give me something good here. We've got a creature and now this is so typical of this deck. I'm going to keep this. Uh, double white's a bit of a stretch and we've already got Blessing, so I'm going to get rid of this and this. Let's say done. And hopefully we just draw into a land. I mean, we've only got 20 left. And it's almost half of our stuff. So, but I, I'm be lying to you if I said this deck is pretty finicky. It's very white mana deck that way, where it feels just where you're just like, oh come on, you know, I've got four of those things. Where is it? Or you'll get those hands. I was having that yesterday, where I'd have like five lands. Okay, Mulligan. 
five lands or six lands. And you're like, geez, really? Mulligan, one land. And you're like, come on, I've lost the game right now. It's just, it just never seems to happen. Other decks at the 21 mana count. Here we go. We're at 21 mana. I'm going to have to start getting a new complaining card frame. This keeps up. <clears throat> so we've had some really successful outings with White Infect in the past. We've had some very big time crash and burns because of hands like this. Hopefully we're right in the middle there. and Because I have I've been winning quite often with this list, even against some Tron lists. But it has been the same thing we're in now, the tournament practice room. We'll see. Oh, all right. So at least we know we're up against Stompy. Often thought, I wonder if... Uh, Har or hollow would be good against uh, Savage Swipe because they, they just Savage Swipe to Stompy is the galvanic blast of like affinity. They just always have it in their hand. When they get off to these starts, I mean, we're on a three turn clock here, and if we don't draw land, this is over. I'm just morbidly curious where the hell our next land is coming from. Let's see. Draw, draw. I'm waiting for a clump, uh, a bit of a clump there. Frustrating. It's just something you should... I mean, we're running 21 lands. Look at this curve outside of the curve. It's just... Boop. There we go. All right. Strands are coming in. Green's coming in. I think that's about it. Bone Splitter's kind of cool against, uh, you know, a double play with Bodyguard being able to trip it uh, or at least stop a, a Pit Sulk from coming over. Um, Sentinel's Eyes I like a lot, but it's always kind of the one thing I can cut. And uh, we'll get rid of the curves here. Lower our curve. Keep things on board. And hopefully we can uh, win. I just lost some games against Affinity because they always have Galvanics. Is Jose Pirista. Yes. Me too. Me too. They always seem to have it. This is why that one uh, Azorius uh, Protection from Red list spell. It's just so therapeutic to play it. Finally! Kind of a decent hand. I'd really like one of these to be a Plains, but we'll keep. Not the best card against Stumpy, but hey, we at least got a Bodyguard. And the uh, Lost Leonin. If they want to fight that, the benefit is okay, they hit us for four if we don't have Bodyguard out. and Or two, because uh, they, this is uh, Wither Damage. You always got to remember that. I will always bring it up because I see that error all the time. If you fight a creature with infect, it is wither damage. So their f normal 4-4 will be a, I don't know, 2-something, two 2-3, two, and then it'll die no matter what they do. Well, they hunger the Howl Pack, then it's like a 1-1. One, one. Woohoo! Goofy Hutlord. Gonna have to head out. I'll check the rest on YouTube. Good luck with the rest of your games. Thank you, my friend. Good luck back at ya. Have a wonderful rest of your Saturday. All right. Here we go. We'll bring this out. They still don't know what we're on, which is the benefit of getting trounced game one, if there is any. I'd like to think that's it. Priest of Norm's going to do some work. How cool would it be to get solid footing now? The worst deck, if you like this kind of style, the worst thing you can run into really is uh, other white decks. Because when you call protection from spells, it's frustrating. You're just like, not that. All my stuff just fell off. Got to be careful. All right. What do I got going on here? Oh, rank or play. You gain all the life you want. So now Vault Scourge is just an irritant flyer. I don't even really care about it. Cool. We're going to bring this out. Um, normally, I really like Eckerclaw Murr against Stumpy. And I think I still do. I would really like to drop Priest of Norn here, but I think Bodyguard Murr is better because I'm probably going to use the uh, Bodyguard on the Leonin here. So that's, uh, there's no reason not to do this beforehand. It might actually promote them to let me through. We'll do this. And see, that's why we play four Bodyguards. Doesn't this feel good? We can be a little wanton or reckless with our uh, Bodyguard there. Sometimes I'll repeat a... Um, vocabulary word immediately with the um, I forget I forget the word for that but something that means the same thing because I know we have an international audience and my lexicon goes a little too deep sometimes and I don't want anybody being a little lost in the uh, translation so terrible movie by the way oh saw the light uh, if if you have Amazon Prime and you are a fan of trailers check out the lighthouse not so much the movie. I think the movie was very solid. 
I wouldn't not recommend it, but it's very, very weird, very dark. I liked it, but the trailer is amazing. However, don't go Google it because everything online is not that trailer. It's so frustrating. I wanted to share it with all my editing and production friends and nobody knew what I was talking about because I couldn't find it. And I'm like, no, go to Amazon, watch the trailer for The Lighthouse. It's awesome. And you'll be saying what a lot. You'll get that once you watch it. Okay, Nest Invader. One thing I don't like about green decks too, they have quite a bit of uh, color fixing in their creatures, meaning colorless, devoid creatures, the Scourge. So it kind of neuters our bodyguard a little bit. I was going for YouTube right away. Thanks for the heads up. <laughs> All right, so we have this and that. Ooh, that's pretty cool. Hmm. Well, let me protect this a little bit more. It needs it a bit more. We've got them shaking in their boots. We'll see. Double bodyguard, which had another mur right behind this one. Kind of marooned with our white source here. Feels like we're playing a brute squad and waiting for blue to show up. Alrighty. Well, we'll call green on this. And uh, take out a little bit of fun. All right. Priest of Norn coming up next. I almost promise. Come on now. Get that Icar Claw going to town. I don't know. Miss some infect. It's nice when you have protection packages behind it, too. Ooh, what have we got here? Another Nest Invader. See, if it wasn't for that Scourge and the uh, Colorless Token, we could uh, just kind of smash in recklessly, but no. There's a lot of recklessness going on today. That's what Infect's all about. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, I got a cool little idea for a promo. Where do ideas come from? That's always made me wonder. I like little... Terry Pratchett wrote something cool about that because, you know, there's ions and then there's... He had he had some little creative, like, almost like the ionization of, like, or... or um. The light speed particles moving through the universe and there there was actually one that was kind of like a thought con or something and it and those are the where you get kind of ideas and stuff and they just kind of jump into your head and that's why according to this fiction novel but it made more sense than a lot does anyway because nobody knows okay we're at 14 i better pay attention here he's getting back his multicolored blocking festival Normally, this is when you feel frustrated because you can't keep up with the life game. We don't care about that. Hmm. I'm going to protect that. He wants to get rid of the Sentinel's eyes. That's fine. We'll say green. Been noticing Stumpy really overboards a lot. Not even a pilot, but just Gleeful just is kind of like this band aid for everything and. I think it really slows down the deck in a lot of cases. All right, we got ourselves a little bit of a combo here. Well, we'll we will at least see this happen, hopefully, unless they've got a vines and rip off our joy. But we'll see what happens there. Come on over. I'm ready to trade. How does conspire work? Well, as long uh, when you're casting the spell, you tap two creatures that share the same color, and you copy it once. That's how it works. All right, Shirazamon. Thank you for that, my friend. And as you can see, we get it back. We'll just pay, pay two. And with uh, Fengrafts, it's really cool because like, we can get rid of both bodyguards so that when we trip Fengraft, we get Leonin. Does that make sense to everybody? So we have to get rid of two things. And we're able to kind of fine-tune our graveyard. Now, if I was going against like a mono black, I might want to get back the bodyguard so I'd get rid of the uh, Leonin and a bodyguard. Do, 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 do. Alrighty, let's see what we got here. Vigilance. Oh, this is going to be so sweet. And it gets the boost. So cool. If we get a planes, this is going to be awesome. Come on, most probable card in the deck. Let's go. I'm not even paying attention to my life total. I could be at one right then and just been like so cavalier about him attacking. It's Sorry, I'm a little too uh, 
focused on the commentary here. Cool. Glad you brought that in. You never want to hear your opponent say that. Let's see. One artifact. Let's attack. All right. Let's do this. Already has this. This has flash. Very cool card. Oh, you're going to let me through, are you? Whoopsie. You're almost dead. Or are you dead? If we had a mutagenic effect here, they would be. But they let it through, and it almost cost them the game there. This little sliver of light gone. Whoop. So, hey, show's complete. I did the little combo there, and it's awesome because it keeps coming. If we had another plane that would have been over, we would have had Sentinel's Eyes on there, and it would have given it another boost. That's why sometimes it's why I don't like Bone Splitter when this combo's working, but when the combo's working, you've won. Yeah, and good luck killing a 2 5 because that's a flash card, and even Galvanic Blast can't really deal with it. Now, if White had a way to get Trample, I thought about putting maybe a Flying Artifact in or something like that, so. Few and Fall Between. Let's go. Ooh, there's another one. That's good. I mean, he's got a block, so it's no sense in trying to, like, overdo it with this guy. Hopefully we're able to pull this off. Uh, he's going to have to keep back either play a resource and attack again, or... I could see a scenario where they win next turn with like a Vines and, and uh, something else. I'm not quite sure. Like a, a end of turn, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Hunger of the Hell pack right now. That would do it. Don't have it. Don't have it. All right. Looks like we're going to at least... We lost that first one, right? I think we did. I think we just got super screwed. Stuck at one mana. That's right. So start with an L there. That sucks. Very fun deck. This is this catalog's under probably wouldn't pay money in a tournament. You can get lucky and, and really surprise some people. It does have some great matchups, but um, it's got some staying power, that's for sure. But um, if if you kind of like what we were talking about with the Maverick Girl, if you feel a little burned out and stuff like that, this is a this is a very neat deck to just kind of re-energize, right? Check it out, Los Chimera. All right, well this game is over, no matter what. Next turn, except that we have Vigilance. Man, if this gave protection from, that'd be pretty sweet. Pretty sweet, pretty sweet. Well, we've got one of these out. We might as well make it a, a first strike endeavor here. First strike with Infect is so confusing to people that aren't used to it. Their math gets so bonkers. Here we go. So damage doesn't even happen because the first strike neuters them with wither damage and then it's just it's over all right well if they got a uh any sort of boost effect we're probably dead here even another rancor will kill us as our fangrafts just stare at us in mockery hey i forgot i had a little libation over here Very cool. Here we go. Here we go. Does it do they got it? Do they got the vines? They probably do. Boom! We're gonna start off with lose lose. That sucks, but you could see where this was going. We've got some pretty cool ways through, but with uh, triple colors, meaning one of them's devoid, we're in a little bit of a loss there. So, all right. Well, we start off down two. It's really close though, except for that first game with the deck lost. So I'm just gonna jump right into another one here, guys. We're gonna do this. Let's see, not joking. I've been like out of five games, I usually win four of them when I've been playing this version, and here we are, O2. <laughs> but hey, that's how the cookie crumbles. I still really, really, really like this list. Even if we go O5 today, I really like this list. It's um, it's got quite a bit of staying power, but it can be finicky with those uh, open airs. That's why I'm running 21 lands, which seems like too many, but we've already seen. Either get flooded or screwed. It's very rarely in between, and uh, you could you could add you know the uh, secluded steps and stuff. I've tried up to all four of them in some builds, but right when you need them most, like for that Chamel's blessing for the win, is when you draw it and then you have to play it tapped. And I like lands that come into play like this. Oh, LSO seventy four. I'm glad you said that. Um, dang, I had the other piece of paper in my. There are 
I think it's is it steadfast guard there's so many cards that even even the uh, heroic guy and um, that would benefit from solid footing and when they get targeted they get plus zero plus two again and I was about to build a uh, really weird defensive aggro white deck that attacked with defensive cards and you know you could grab Oromancer and like four pilgrims to go find the solid footing to just drop it on all these guys because there's there's quite a few that come out for like less than one or two mana and they're they're beasts especially if you drop down solid footing so yeah that's not the one steadfast guard it's um rebel guard I, I can't remember i think it's two and a white and every time it gets targeted it does something and then you've got tireless tribe you know there's our one drop you've got the uh centaur that heroic runs so your curve is already getting really really nice and narrow and you can go from there yeah we'll want to play first let's see what we got here all right this is the kind of hand I usually have. So uh, this is what we brew for. We're going to actually keep a hand. Look at that. We're not starting in a deficit. Isn't that a neat theory? So this is one of my favorite sequences. Bodyguard with critter backup. And if something goes wrong, you got another one. And then, you know, if, if the combo shows up, good. If not, you can sometimes save it with that. So we'll lead off with Bodyguard and Nomads and Core. That's another one. Yep. I wouldn't quite put it in that list that I was thinking of about. But, yeah, it's along those same lines. You start thinking of those. There's that. The one shaman, any cleric gets targeted, it gives it plus O plus two. I know Tribe was trying to go that way when it was first in its infancy. All right. All right, that's enough solid footings. And let's hope we don't run into a uh, force spike. I ran into the peekaboo deck just yesterday. I was like, really? Force spike at every every beck and call. I was like, oh, I wish I never put that deck together. <laughs> my most randy bueller deck of all but go give the maverick girl some love if you got time which most of us have plenty of just a nice email or message or i don't know i think she's on twitter a lot like most people are other than me and uh yeah let her know how much her content means and stuff it goes a long way i'll tell you and what does it hurt it takes you what 20 seconds make somebody's day it's pretty awesome. All right. Let's do that. See if we get a hard counter out of this. Oh, what are we going up against here? I'm getting so used to counter spells and fairies and such. Deprive. We run into peer through depths. You know, that's pretty underplayed. I think arcane is one of those mechanics, and I'm guilty of this. You kind of, you're like... Yeah, it's powerful. I, I get how that works. And you kind of scratch your head and you're like, I think I'm just going to draw a card. But if you really brew around it, something my youngest would probably really like. He really likes complex cards with all kinds of crazy rules, interaction and stuff. But there's probably a lot to be done still with Arcane. There's enough of a card pool there. So some love for you too. Oh, I appreciate it, Joseph. I didn't mean it that way. I just, uh, you know what? It's, uh, it's rough out there for a lot of reasons outside of even magic. But, uh, a lot of silly tribalism and hate in the world. And uh, you know what? You like somebody, let them know. Oops. All right. Well, hey, it's the first, first W we get. Uh, this is interesting. They're doing what I like to do, which is where you just uh, throw everything out. Um, hmm. Well, we saw blue. doesn't mean I really want to bring in COP blue, but I might like it more than a corpse cur because I can cycle it. So we'll just bring that in just in case they have some smashing awesome blue stuff and we go to the late game. And Actually, might have been better to uh, bring in the uh, Ferret and Longbow. Yeah, I tell you, I get all my information now, and it's kind of lazy of me, but on Facebook, like when I, I listen to Popperpedia because they're so good at grabbing everything and they don't list it. I usually don't hear about it. So that was the first I'd heard of uh, Maverick Girl. So apologies there. Oh, thank you for that soft tackle. I appreciate it. We're new MTG players and have been building a bunch of proper decks. Some of your list. You know, we do King of the Hill. Winner winning deck stays. The loser picks a new deck. Tonight's menu is Boris Bully versus Red Burn. All right. So I'd love to. Propaganda. All right. Thank you for that. Yeah, I'd give Bully the edge on that with... All those prismatic strands main, but good luck, burn player. 
All right. Well, we've got the protection package. We're going to keep this. Now the deck's showing up. Two games in. Burn. Man, I, I really like the respect Burn's got in the last year. Right around the time they uh, printed the Archer, a lot of lists started coming through. It's like easy to beat. I wouldn't even say easy to beat. We've all been there. You you got all these life gain spells in there, and they don't show up in time. You're like, come on, you know, I've never lost to this. That happens. It's it's the uh, it's the great measuring stick of the format. But lately, it's damn respectable. I mean, you have got to be packing some pretty steady hate against a good pilot. And I think that's the other learning thing that has happened. Just the zeitgeist to the masses to the, uh, the who's at home, whatever you want to say. Used to be just you you lump it into that like oh you just turn things sideways and attack you know it's like no 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 there's a there is a sequencing to a good burn player or a great burn player versus just a a good burn player where you're like I'll do this now I'll do this now and usually facing it I definitely can see the differences well, yeah, I'm assuming we might be against a freed for the real deck I'm not quite sure here double chow mano might really serve our purposes being that we're uh, one of the other good things about the bodyguard is when you cast a naked chow mano. Now, that might be the first time that's ever been said. Naked Chow Mano. I wish there was a little, like, Harry Potter well that we could look into and that little ink thing and see, has anyone ever said this? I've always been curious about that. Anyway, uh, when you cast a naked Chow Mano, meaning it looks like you don't have anything to do, well, with a bodyguard out, you can still protect it from the protection from spell to be ultra protected. Say that eight times fast. Bolt go face, says Shiraz. Yeah, that's the old mode of thinking, Shiraz. Come on, get with it. I give Bully the edge too, says Soft Tackle, except for that we're new and far, far from piling it well. <laughs> yeah. Although, you know, one thing bad, I think Prismatic Strands is a card. The stock's gone down probably around the 15% mark because Bully got so popular and that became such a leaned on strategy. There's even talk I've heard, you know, everyone's heard because there's just infinite talk. Of, uh, you know what, I'm going to sacrifice this now to this so that they don't untap. Crucial play here because they untap. I think we're out of the game. we got to call blue on this and then uh, we might get them next turn. But um, there was even rumor that, you know, it might it might be, uh, what do you call a, a prismatic that's getting the axe. You never know. All right. I'm going to drop this out. I could have ethereal chow mano, but I don't know. They might be running um, curfew. I just want extra options here. We're going to say blue. And hopefully this is enough to go through. Ah. But yeah, I've, I've been seeing a lot of that. It's actually why I went from three to two in this list, because against burn, I'm pretty good about playing around it. We got protection from blue. We got a bodyguard. We got all kinds of good stuff. All right. What are they doing? Are they leaning on snap? And, you know, in a perfect world, that's another, even though I love Snap and I use it a lot in a lot of my brews, that's another one of those free mana spells that will get abused in a vacuum. You know, if you ban, I, I, I know it seems extreme, but I would really go all in with that stuff. All right. Well, it's a little frustrating to draw this now. We can drop here. What do you say? Green, maybe? Let's do this. Let's say green. Attack! I'm going to go with the colors we see. I like to keep that solid footing for a little bit of surprise value. I mean, hit for one less because of the uh, Leon in there. All right. We got one there. Never quite got online, but remember that was Snap. That's an incredibly, um, it can be greedy and just thematic and uh, tempo play when you when you have access to that. It, it, it's uh, brutal. So you, if you have sack outlets like that, Mog, uh, Mog Fanatic works, uh, Mog Raider, that sort of thing. Anyway, guys, off to get some more coffee. Hope you are too. Be right back. The height of the Great Depression. Great Depression. Okay. A lot of hardworking farmers were going under back then, and I dedicated this little tune to them. Okay. Oh, the farmers say they need a helping hand But I say we should kick them off their land 
We'll send in lots of cops and burn down all their crops and turn their pastures into desert sand. Deserty do. Now oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's no, don't applaud. That's terrible. Oh, thank you, Paul. What kind of people are you? Well, that's a wonderful That's people. a horrible song. Too heartwarming, eh? A heartwarming farmer. <laughs> Farmers are the backbone of this country. That's terrible. Well, one man's backbone is another man's parasite. Oh, my God! <laughs> Let's just change the subject, pal. How about a sweet little song I used to sing for all the ladies? Okay, a song for the ladies. Well, that sounds fine, I guess. Yeah. Oh, well, well, there you go. I Go ahead. This should be terrific. Okay, here you go. Yeah. Oh, women shouldn't disagree with men. <laughs> If they do, they should be locked up in a pen. We'll shackle them with chains and lobotomize their brains to make damn sure they don't disagree again. Lobotomy loo. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is that the right thing? I have a lot of problems so with that song. In the eye. Just you just said in the lobotomy eye. loo at the yes, end of the I song. Did. That's not a word. Yeah, Second well, of all, that is one of the most offensive songs I've ever heard. That's worse than the farmer song. Yeah. You actually want to lock up women in pens? Well, not all of them. The larger ones could be tied up in stables. Oh, for God's sake! Yeah, just kind of rope them over I, the words. I do not. This is terrible. Put. No, that's it. That's it. Yeah, I don't care if you're a ghost from the 30s or not. Just get out of here. Say, you got a hot Irish temper. I wrote a little song about the Irish. Listen up. The Irish shouldn't be allowed to breed. We already have more drunkards than we need. They're all just lazy slobs who want to take away our jobs. And when they cut their fingers, whiskey's all they bleed. Whiskey woo. Now, wait a minute. You said whiskey woo. Got it? Got it. It's slippery. Yes! You need Absorb This. Arsenic technology lets you board wipe any mana flood. And each sheet is three times more absorbent, and it's uncounterable. Hey, look, I got it. Absorb This, the seal of cleansing. This is confusing! I'll have to start on you! <laughs> <laughs> All right, new ad there. Forgot to mention that did a new new little commercial there. Didn't know that about the French angle. We have no creatures, and here we go. But we did have the Three Stooges there, which I've always been a big fan of. Mulligan and Keep. All right, here's what's going to happen. We have three lands. I'm going to get rid of one of them, and then we're not going to see the third one for like 90 turns. That's what happens. We'll see if I'm prophetic or pathetic. Here we are. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I was coming out with that little uh, absorbent commercial. I was starting to lean on Seal of Cleansing, but then the Absorb This card, which nobody would use, but it does have Swamp Cycling. I was like, wow, it almost sounds like this comes. Now this, I don't think we're going to win this matchup, and I'll tell you why. Not because it's heroic, but because they're white. And because we're going to say protection from white and all our stuff will fall off. So Chow Mano is kind of useless here. Pathetic Prism. <laughs> what does that do? Yeah, it bans, you tap it and it bans a card for the game. That'd be pretty cool. That'd be No, that'd be too good for it to be pathetic, right? Yeah, Pathetic Prism comes into play. Uh, your hand size is reduced by like two and, and uh, you, you have to discard a card. <laughs> That would be a pretty good one, right? Pathetic Prism. All right. They're probably thinking we're on some sort of uh, tribal mechanic, too. One of the better cards we can get here because we're dealing counters. Let's go. All right. 
I have looked far and wide for something that turns things into artifacts or turns things into lands or turns things colors. There's a few, but nothing quite works. A lot of neat ways to get around certain strategies out there. I know my uh, blue tribe list, or blue tribe, what am I talking about? My uh, blue robot and a few others trying to use that Velkanen set chark or whatever. Of course, the second you bring that in, it's you're facing all this removal. And when you need it most, like against Tron and stuff, you never seem to draw it. Thus is the way of the universe. All right, that first strike's really going to hurt. But we've got our own little Ickerclaw Murr technology going on here. Ah, Murr, you know what? I think it's better to block here. I'm going to double block here. Not that I just to add one less counter on this thing. And to stay alive, uh, because bodyguard's really not gonna do much here. So we're gonna double block. Say okay, and then I'll sacrifice this to call pro white, and that'll at least make it a two six because of the weather damage. This means fourth or strength in English. Yeah, that's what I was going for. Wink wink. Here my lazy uh American version, it just sounded like this, like, hey, absorb this, like, so that, that's where I was going, isn't that funny, it's like, we're going to use a white thing to give something protection from white, at least this way one damage will get through, you first strike all you want, you trailblazer, you centaur of the defensive persuasion, aha, yeah, yeah, here we go, and yeah, we got all kinds of good stuff cooking here, whoop, all right, well, man, I know you want to call white, but you don't, too. This is crazy. We'll go here. We'll save that Karametra's blessing for another day. We'll attack, and I think I'm just going to call... You know, I'm going to call black because they might have that remove graveyard beckon apparition card and that'll stop them from having a chump blocker later. It's better than some odds. Play real careful here. You want to say white, but all your stuff will fall off. So we'll say black. Boop. Hit for one more. Hopefully we draw a bunch of other good stuff. Better write down a rock. We're already in our fourth game here. It's going to be a fast show today. Only one hour in. Get a few of these. Yeah. Okay, here we are. Boy, they're not worried. Maybe they got Prismatic in hand. Won't happen with a Ecker Claw Murrow. It's one thing I like about the artifact base and the uh, Corpse Curve inclusion in this. is pretty cool for that reason. All right, well, they're playing... Hmm. Now, normally we could trip Fangraph here and have some neat options. We're just going to play it regardless and attack. Boom, boom. Do we save it for a rainy day? I don't know. We're going to go like this. And hit for five. Now that we can get him to one or we get a uh, spell, we could actually... No, we can't do that either. If we get a bone splitter, we could still bring back our bodyguard via the uh, Fengraf play. Make it protection from white and go from there. Both have first strike, so that's going to be a uh, non-starter. Called Viz and not Vis, LOL. Oh. <laughs> yeah, if you look in the background of that ad, I, I superimposed some John Avon artwork in the background of the frames there. I was, it was one of those things I was done, and I'm like, wow, man, that took a, that took a long time. And I'm like, it could be better. There's three shots with frames in the background. What if I made iconic artwork in each of them? Whoa! And that's where it went. All right, so we got the win here, I think. Wait a minute. No, because that costs three to bring out, and then we'd have to pay one to cast it. Mmm, that kind of hurts. We'll do it just to do it. If we had one more white, see, we could call... No, we couldn't do that either, could we? We could call Pro White and then the Blessing wouldn't work. So never mind that. We'll just rock like this. Yeah, I kept it real subtle. I'm about as far from George Lucas as it gets. A lot of times I'll, I'll wait on something a few hours and I look at it again. I'm like, that's too overt. 
too too on the nose, too whatever you want to call it. Oh man, I wish we had some trample here. Ah, if we can if we can get in some more damage here. Actually, I think we need to cast blessing here. They're casting blessing. We're casting blessing. Everybody's casting blessing. All right. Well, we'll still kill it because uh, the infect damage is wither. I don't know what that's going to do. Oh, it's going to give them a little counter. Okay, hopefully they choose white and goof up. They chose black too. Interesting. What did it for... Six. We will hit for this. That might be enough to get through. Our guy just survives. I believe they're dead. I think they're going to be at negative one. I mean, uh, one. <laughs> yeah, and then they can target it again to give it a little bit more life total there. This is an interesting list. I mean, matchup. All right. The centaur is back from the grave. He's been neutered, but he's still alive. A little dancing artwork in the background. You flopped each shot, and then there's also the product placements in most of the shots, too, in the background. The benefit of watching commercials on mute. I'm like, I could turn that into something. Still taking submissions on our uh, fan based one. In fact, I think that one this Wednesday goes dry. I haven't heard much of. <clears throat> Just one or two ideas out there, but nothing fully fleshed out. So I think we're going to have to leave the uh, commercial angle stuff to me, I guess. All right. Well, we have a blocker. Hmm. I don't see a reason to not do this. That's a neat little trick plays. So we're going to guarantee something dies here. It won't be that. We can block this next turn, and if they just draw a land, we might have them. Immunogenic wins it for them. There's a lot of things that win it for them here. Ooh, a 9-9 nine -nine Infect Crater. That's cool. Got all the protection in the world, and we don't need it because we're up against another white mage. Darn it. Yeah. Bummer. Here comes three. All right. If they were only at nine, we could just get... Loose goose here and Do they got it? Ah <laughs> called it. They got it. Alright. I didn't expect to win that first game anyway, so good for them. That was awesome. Alright. We lose a really close one to heroic. Let's see what our next card was, just for the uh interesting. Yeah. Not the greatest top deck. Speaking of which, let's get rid of it. Now we're going to bring in Rune of Protection White, which is fantastic in this matchup, in theory. Gut Shot would be pretty good here, too. I'll bring in all three of these, see what we can do here. I'm going to leave in Bone Splitter in case we get kind of a, a, a um, standard bearer locked out and stuff like that. Sentinel can go down to two. I think we're going to leave it at that. Uh, Blessing, yeah, this is pretty pretty useless here. I can't really think. You know, I can use it offensively, though, so I'm going to keep it in and throw it on their creatures and say pro-white, even though the, the benefit, usually they still have the counters on them and stuff. Um, I think we'll go with that. I like Bodyguard just for the uh, buying you a turn, a little bit of a fog effect there. Let me see here. Maybe a Prismatic Strands. Well, let's go down to two channel mana. We'll bring in the Strands and the COP because we're going to be swinging for the fences here. I don't think they really run Strands package there. And we've got Murr. I think Corpse Crow might be a little overkill. And the Gut Shot for a little surprise value. Early targets on. Little uh, tokens from the... Uh... Yeah. Did that make any sense? Let's go. Huzzah! All right. I don't know. I just got some little caffeine kick. I'm like doubly fired up all of a sudden. Let's do this. Yuck! Hey, you old bald idiot. I'll tell you why you don't want to run four Fengrass, because it hands like this. 
Now, you could argue we still have this. Oh man, we got so many critters. Should I keep? Should I keep? Ah, there's so many first strike abilities in their list and they come online on turn two usually. What do you guys think? I think we gotta scoop this. Even though we can play Eckhart Clomer, if we draw planes, we're gonna feel pretty good. Yeah, we gotta mull this. Ah, I wish we could see what the next card was. We got two lands, we got stuff. We're feeling really good with this. Woo! All right. Keep. Now, what to put on the bottom? This! Done. Draw that later, and we'll make a bunch of stuff fall off in theory. Let's do this. There's just too many critters in the world. I tell you, we need a lot of land. Don't want to see too many Fengrafts in this matchup, because they don't help trip the rune. Keep that in mind. Circle of Protections, you can use any mana. This one has to be white. Destroy an aura attached to a creature. Ooh, the Devout Harpist. Uh, because uh, in, with this deck, a lot of times you're one turn away from winning, and if I draw kind of a defensive spell when I've when I've got the gas on five mana out, I, I'll trip it for like the last little bit of like protect this and get get in that last bit of damage. Paladin nineteen, good. To th thank you for bleh, thank you for coming. Thank you for chiming in, chiming in. You know what I mean. It's good to see you. See you next week. Yeah, that stuff. Let's see if he wants to trade. Right. I wonder if bodyguard said target permanent gains protection from the color of your choice. Would it still be a common? I think you might be able to do that. Now that devout harpist will not kill the rune of protection. So that feels pretty interesting. It has to be attached to a creature. Hopefully we'll catch them with their pants down, so to speak, with solid footing and uh, on a priest, and uh, we'll get in that surprise value 5 damage out of the blue. That'll be pretty cool. Hmm. We'll go like this. Okay. I think I want to wait to just kind of alpha strike here. Let's put on the despondent brakes here. Eek. Take that devout harpist. Oh, good point. Yeah. So many damn auras. Hard enchantments. That's how I roll. Except for my hand. Don't look there. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Woo. Here we go. Yeah, so if you didn't catch the top of the show, in the next couple of weeks, I think I'm going to try to go live to YouTube just as an experiment, not as a permanent thing or whatnot. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> Don't make me use it. Yeah. Well, I don't know if it's really worth that. I don't even really need to use it here, do I? Let's just use it here. This one, please. Before blockers, just in case he's got some sort of trick. Uh, uh, protection from white's not going to be that effective. I mean, they might have a journey to nowhere. I'll let one through. I don't know, Nimchimsky. You know, it's funny. I, I'm curious. I might I might do a stream here on Twitch on like a Wednesday because I keep getting these notifications like I've unlocked everything to get subscriptions except I haven't streamed on every day of the week. And I don't think I've ever done a Wednesday before or a Thursday. So it might be one of those days that I, might, I literally might just be doodling just a technique. See what I can unlock. I wish there was a way to do it offline so it didn't throw everybody off and stuff without having to do a full show. We'll see. All up in the air. If you miss it, no big deal. 
It's going to be a whole lot of nothing. Watch, they ban like 16 cards, and it's just like, wow, <laughs> this is crazy. Now that just taps. I wish she had to sacrifice to do that. I can get that back. Hmm. It'd be nice to get our Sentinel's eyes out. Not that it's going to do too much here. Hmm. I don't know really how we're going to push through here. We really need Bone Splitter to show up. Maybe that's why I had three or four in the last build before I uh, took this offline and waited a few months to play it. Maybe Heroic was a thing, and that's why. Definitely, you do not, like I said at the top of the show, you do not want to see white creatures across from you in this, this style of build here. All right, we will allow it. This is fine here. I'll just double block and kill the warrior. And I mean, we could just do everything here, but let's uh, we'll save our mana. Bodyguard's gonna die anyway. Go like this. Say pro white on this. And then I'll at least get rid of that. At least for a turn, get rid of the Umbra. Is he gonna use a resource here? Yeah, all right. Same difference. He loses two life. Not that we really worry about it. I'll say white. And nothing happens. I'd say we could time him out, but we're three minutes down. <laughs> I'm not even sure how that would work if I did replace it with that kind of a show. It's like, you know, that wouldn't be a... Um, what Would you get an alert? That sort of thing. I don't know how many people in the chat... Get something on alert. Hey, that's what I wanted to see. Something I can do something with. Woo! All right, now our bodyguard can come online. Problem is, we need multiple bodyguard effects, but now I can use a Chow Mano effectively. Yeah, yeah, that's the ticket. I get alert, says Nim Chimsy. All right, that's one thing I learned watching my son's stream is he was asking the chat a lot of questions. And well, had I blown up as fast as he did, I don't know if I would have been able to uh, withstand it. Or the slow growth has there's something to be said for it. I don't even have a YouTube account, such so nice. I think any Google account turns into one. It's some nefarious ploy of bringing everything together under Ultra Mart. Oh no. Hey, man, they're like messing with our plan. I'll do that. What a bummer. Mm -hmm. um, Alrighty, clear that. Hmm. Oh, man. Yeah, we really need to lean on bodyguard here to push this through. Okay, that's a little weird. Not sure what they're gonna pull here. Pro white, all right. I pretty much just have the. Uh, oh, I like this play. Uh, if I get in, oh uh, man, oh man, oh man, oh man. Mm. Them attacking is a good call right now. Let's see. I really hope that. Okay, interesting. Ah, we really need our bodyguard online right now. Darn it. And I say we just wait. Okay. Maybe they'll journey to nowhere and we can... Well, Blessing won't even work. I mean, we can... But that's what's neat about Solid Footing. If they do cast like a journey right now, we could we could solid footing and then do that in response. They might have the uh, healer play. It'd get messy, but it's some sort of reaction. EOT, we really got to pitch that uh, bodyguard and hope he attacks with both. Ouch. Oh, man, that hurts. Does this say target creature? All right, that really blows. Mm, that hurts. I don't think we're going to be able to beat another white list here. We're protected from ourselves, and that doesn't help. Darn it, darn it, darn it. 
Nine coming over. We might be able to I'll trip this now. Maybe they'll forget to attack. Getting back our bodyguard. Yes! They did it. They got greedy. Now then. What would hit harder? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I can't really do much of anything other than just go through and blessing it, right? All right. We do this. I mean, I'm kind of dead either way. It's not like we've infected them yet, but I was a little excited to have that happen. Uh, yeah, let me see here. Well, we could. We have a stay alive play, which is a first strike blessing uh, smash into the trailblazer. Yeah, we can enchant it. We still have the bodyguard block play. If we want to roll that way. Huh. Let's do, uh, we'll do this. Unfortunately, it's only going to hit for a little bit less if we make it have Vigilance, but it doesn't have it yet, so it's just a nice little boost as it sits now. And uh, Ethereal Armor, I guess. And yeah, we smash in, that would make that a little bit more tolerable, but then our creature's dead. So I think we're just going to wait. I mean, I could have got in for like two or maybe even four infect damage. I just don't know. We're, what I'm trying to say is we've lost this game. I'm just trying to hopefully uh, look for some little out. Maybe our opponent puns a little bit. Vigilance is such a such a beast. I've even thought of running those in the sideboard against other lists and such. All right. Zap. Here we go. I've got to pull this off. I can't. We're just going to block here. Booyah. No way out of this one, folks. Crashing and burning hard. We're going to make a little fireworks display out of it, though. Ethereal armor coming on through. Yeah. Here we go, suckers. Smash time. First strike versus first strike. Yeah. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Concede. Wonk, wonk, wonk. All right. Well, I said that's what we don't want to face is another heroic deck. Or not another, but a heroic deck. Because it's kind of protected from our list. Darn it. I'll show you guys. Other than that freed victory, not doing so hot here. We, I think we really had Stompy, but... Uh, that Vines of Vastwood sent us packing, and, and if you remember, we kept like a th four or three card hand in that first game, so going to lose that every time, as, unless our opponent's doing the same. So going up against Kabold Hero. I don't think I've ever played this person before. Not that I can remember everybody, but womp womp. It happens. Hey, this is a pretty good hand. I'm liking it. We'll keep this. Go like this. Yeah, it's funny. Uh... I have been mulliganing a lot with this list, and, you know, I've run up a, a version that has 24, and the same thing happens. It's it's like there's a ghost in the machine with white. And I remember way back, like 2004, 2005, running, um, maybe we're up against Brute Squad here, see a Tranquil Cove, running um, mono white lists back in the day with, like, Shades of Joker and stuff like that. And same sort of thing. It just always seemed to have, like, Issues with, oh, come on, another Tron list. All right, let's see if we can at least get this done with maybe a surprise uh, Priest of Norn, maybe. Apologies. Another Tron list. This might be fitting if it ends on Monday, right? Maybe this is the, the last days of Tron. That'd be a good name for a documentary. Okay. 
Got a pretty scary board if we draw another land. But then you begs the question, what do you go all in with here? Because they're one turn away from dropping that stone horn. And there goes our game one. Relic is totally useless against Tron. All right, we like that. However, I think we're going to just attack here. We can't kill him, so I'd rather just get more resources out and make him think like, oh, White Infect, that doesn't have any hitting power. And then, huzzah, we're going to smash with that. Unless we run into counter magic here, which we might. Never know. But taking one probably doesn't scare him too much over getting Tron and then probably locking us out with you-know-who. But maybe we can Chow Mano the uh, Stonehorn and a bounce play, and we'll give it a few turns. Yeah, I'm not quite sure why this damn thing mulligans so much. 21 lands. There's only two spells that cost more than three. So it's a bit frustrating when that happens. And then, you know, when it doesn't, speak of the devil, uh, when it doesn't, that's when it gets flooded. So there's no rhyme or reason there. That's the most frustrating thing. If every game I was getting screwed, that'd be one thing, or flooded. But it's just right in the middle there. Okay, so we have no options here. We're just going to hold off. Not do anything. We might be able to chow mano because the man is at this point now where it, we might be able to uh, interact here. Anticipate. Okay. We're feeling like a pathetic prism right now, that's for sure. Discard a card. Add two colors mana to your mana pool. <laughs> yeah, and it says, and then, uh, and yeah, and, and as part of activating it, it, it's destroyed and does like one damage to you. <laughs> We don't care about life. One of the good things we've got on our side. Oh, hey, it's another one. Bane of the format is back. Isn't that fun? And I really want to keep that as a surprise value. Now let me throw this here. I'm call blue just for a... Uh, any sort of bounce shenanigans or dinner of a horror. At least I'll have to have a two-step program to do it. That's, we'd have to get like runner runner on planes to have double access to Chow Mano to stop a, a flicker effect at this point. Hopefully they only target one. And we drew another one anyway, so. All right, I'm gonna give this just a few more turns. This is why it's so hard to brew around, you know. Relic does nothing here. I mean, Fairy Macabre is about the only decent way to kind of stop this interaction here. We really don't care about this. Gain all the life you want. It's one good thing working for us. And there's blue, which we don't really care about. Good news is he'll probably only target one of the stone horns if he does have ephemerate or a ghostly flicker. We might have an out. And we can follow that up with another pro blue on the uh, dignitary spell, but... Until that time comes, we shall see. I like this. This helps a lot. We just attack here. Stoned horny disgrace. <laughs> All right. Let's do this to keep our dude alive. They probably just have a Pulsa Marasa or one of the billion other amazing cards. Good stuff dot deck. That is Tron. Ah, boy, it'd be really nice to solid footing here, but I'm not going to go for it. I'm going to try to just play patient. We have neutered the stone horn. Now he's only got the one target. Now we can at least uh, make it pro blue if he wants to flicker here. But then he's got ephemerate, or she, or whatever. Anticipate. Okay, one of the new 
our cards. Look at the top three cards of your library. Put one of them in your hand and the rest on the bottom. Boo -doo -doo. That's such a wealth of riches Tron has access to. Oh, Atlanti Trust TV. Good to see you. Thank you for chiming in. We've had better days for sure. We've had a lot of close 1-1, one, one, but we've had a lot of close losses. And we're up against Tron at the enveloping the show, at the top of the show and at the end of it. But normally I'd say, no, I want to face something else, but this might be the last weekend of Tron. So we're going to let it uh, mop the floor with us and see how we go. Agreed, Nimchimsky. Just goes to show you, though, how uh, ridiculous Tron can be. It can play cards that are just maybe a B minus, and it's still dominant. Unless it's against another Tron deck that's running more of like Hellsaw's list. All right. So even here, you know, Pulse Marasa, I don't care about them life gaining, but it gets back a Stonehorn, which stops us from attacking, and blah, 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 blah. Huh. Tempted, but no. Let's do a few things here. Gonna attack again. Boom, bing, doom. I'll do this. All right, now I'm going to pull this just to kill this damn stone horn to force him to use a um, something. Hopefully along the lines of a ghostly flicker. So we can at least respond to that with a chow mano on their own dude and maybe shut it off. But again, pull some Marasa, even though the life gain doesn't matter. They'll probably just get it back. Okay. So we're going to annihilate that. Really want to keep our options open. And here comes the flicker. Let's see. This is a tough one. Flicker's just going to come back. I've got to kind of assume that they're not, that they don't have Pulsa Marasa. I mean, they do. We just lost the game. We'll say blue on this. Any interaction by our opponent here, and we still lose. That's why everybody wants this deck banned, see? I'll do nine things, you do one thing. I get to play with all the colors. You know. I'll say blue. If you can get that stone horn back, where's in trouble? The good news is our priest will have protection from his deck if this does go through. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. What's this? A uh, teachings for the perfect spell? Nope. If it was, it would be game over, but... Wrong. Well, not everyone wants a bent. I hope the ban will lead to a civil pupper war. <laughs> we can only hope. I know Tron's the main reason I haven't played competitively for like eight months. Dabbled maybe in two or three. Three, two outings. I think I had one, two, three, or crash and burn sort of day, but... And there's that other part of it, too, you know, when you sit there and you test or you get ready for Tron and you're just like, son of a bitch, you run into nothing except the opposite. All right, what's he going to pull back? Tight spot because we call blue, so he's going to call a land. Interesting. Okay. We'll throw out a Sentinel's Eyes because we can just get it back. That feels pretty good. Uh... We might be able to do something neat here. I think I just want to keep that blessing out against the horror because they're going to flicker it. That's the play. Okay. 
So that'll hit for seven. Oh man, it's so pretty if we could just do that, huh? We have to keep Chalmano back though, because I mean, technically, if we had this extra land, this would be lethal. As it sits now, we have to hold back on Blessing to stop them from just bouncing the elements of this and then eventually that. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, let's go. I think the Blessing's probably the better call here. It will at least allow... Let's attack. Even though our hand's a bunch of enchantments, it is kind of like playing with... Uh, playing with instants. We know the flicker is coming. Let's see it happen. Let's call this on this and say blue. Blue. He hasn't blocked yet. So now the question becomes... Well, no. He's got the prism out, so he can just do it again. Flicker's back. Here we go. I don't know if we should even blessing here. I think we might want to hold it in case they, Tron always seems to have access to every single spell. If they're able to deal with our Chow Mano, we'll be able to blessing our priest f for the stop at least. I don't want that Denrova Horror to die. As it sits now, I don't mind it taking away our dude. We can hit for seven if we go all in here, but I'm not going to. I'm going to say, okay. I'll keep this back because I can still, I can even Kometra's, uh, Karametra's Blessing um, his creature because it's enchanted. Like right now. Let's do that. Tell you, Tron always has an answer. We're out of answers if, if he's got an answer for the answer. Which he does because you know it's going to happen now. It's like, oh yeah, good move. Oops. No, it isn't. Not just because of what just happened there. I mean, that's like a silly, silly option. But, you know, he's just going to flicker back, get back ephemerate, and do this all next turn. So we will discard this. Yep, I know. Either the hexproof or the uh, the flicker play. It's just trying to at least have a little aha moment against Tron. It's frustrating not to be able to pull that off. Wink, and here we go. Now he bounces Chalmano. Flickers it back, bounces everything, and we still lose. We had him like within one infect damage. If we pulled that off, but but no. Funny to think that you might want to have um Apostle's Blessing in this matchup, right? With the Fangraph here. I think that's the note. I might go to three Fangraphs. Don't think I'm going to add a cycler. I think I'm just going to add another basic. This deck has enough mana issues. I don't want to be uh, praying that I draw don't or that I draw that. And here's the bane of the format. I'm going to bounce our Chow Mano. We'll be nice and screwed, and I'll double flicker, kill our board, and that's why everybody's anxious for Monday to happen. But if you ask me, I think Wizards is going to blow it. They're going to end up banning, like, prismatic strands and bonders ornament and hoping everything gets miraculously fixed. Like, Tron wasn't a problem before that. That's the biggest argument against um, my my old stance, and I still love it. I would like to ban Tower and Flicker and Ephemerate and Snap, um, but that's the problem when you just have the Flicker Ephemerate mindset. They're just going to go into another what do you call it? It, 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 there's just so many weapons to to abuse the tools with and having the whole card pool there and infinite mana and every every set that comes out there's there's a new card that it can abuse and stuff like that so you know what 
Uh, we, we just got trashed by Tron. I want to try to end on a little bit of a higher note. So let me try one more matchup here. Oops. Oh, never mind. I'm going to use the restroom, and then hopefully we can get some revenge. I thought we lost two in a row. That was the first game. Oh. Oh, because I quit. All right. Well, we're going to play one more. I'll be right back. Let me uh, use the restroom. We'll be right back. All right, let's hopefully end this with a W here. Now, if there is another Tron, I will scoop. I mean, we'll go to another game. And I'll be a hypocrite saying, no quitters, please. We've already faced it twice. If anything, this show will prove that Monday needs to happen for a variety of reasons. Ha! Ah. dun 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 dun, dun. Yeah, it'll be, uh, I, I think we're going to have a collective big eye roll. That's one of the reasons I was a little, I would say probably bitter is the best word to put it when people are just like, you know, oh, let's have a discussion about, it's like, for what? It's just mental wasted time because if nothing happens or, you know, it's very rare that you're going to guess right other than the gotcha sort of, you know, angle of like, oh, I, I called it. You know, it's like, oh, good, good for you. Pat yourself on the back. It's like. That took how many hours out of everyone's lives to read this article or speculate on this or watch X video or make the video? It's e even worse. So, um, yeah. All right. First thing I'm going to do is we're going to do this right now. We might as well change that up. Three fan graphs and 18 basics. I'm trying to think here. I really like this list. I know, uh, look, we've bumped into Tron twice. And we molded like three or four against Stompy. Other than that, we've had some really fun competitive games. So I agree, Shiraz. There, yeah, it's going to be one of those where it's going to be, I fear Tuesday morning, it's going to be painfully obvious that their look into popper format was all of about, you know, five minutes of a Thursday night meeting. Like, hmm, yeah, yeah, let's get rid of Bonder's Ornament. That's the problem. All right, see you guys next week. And it's just like, oh, my God. After how many articles? Here we go again. 21 lands. We have one. So we're going to mull again. Now we have all lands and stuff we don't need. We're going to mull again. Now it's a bunch of lands. But I'll take this over being screwed because we have to mulligan anyway. So we'll keep this. We at least have a protection suite here. Oh, I know, Jose Vista. I've got to start shortening stuff down to maybe just three underscores. I just have so many decks that when I start naming them, I'm like, I don't want to search for this. So I put like 10 of them and it goes there. But it's not living up to its name. I know we've called it in White Infect, but if you look, it's got a secret win in it. But it's not doing that today. But I highly recommend you give it a try, though. It's a fun little deck. All right, we will keep this. We'll get rid of two cards. Felt like we had to get rid of about 10. Done. All right. I've had a much worse five landers. We'll see what happens here. And we're up against Hexproof. Okay, let's bring this out. We've got four cards. We got four cards. Okay, a little bit goofy start on their end, too. That's all right. What we're really worried about here is first strike, but never that bodyguard is an interesting way of around being around that. I'm going to block here. It's probably got a Sohana Ledgewalker. I'm not too worried about a... Hey, we've got first strike. They've got first strike. we got protection. We'll see how it goes.
man, my son needs to clean his room. It's like dishes all over the place, everything. Oof, what did I call that one? All right. Flood versus screw. Let's see who wins. Zip, pow, boom. Let's go like this. He's got that. We'll attack here. I don't think I'm going to wait around for the thing. I'm just going to hit for an extra booyah. How's that? Three infect in the house. This is just who gets there faster. Now, the neat thing is we have one last card to worry about. We don't really care about Armadillo Cloak. We care about First Strike and the Mask. And there's, speak of the devil, one of them. But we'll be a 5-5 here. Ouch! Mm. That hurts. Nice play. Ram through. Giving green access to removal. Very cool. And here we go. All right. That helps. We'll just do it now. Zoop. Oh, come on. <laughs> what a jerk. <laughs> oh, look at that. I got a 50-50 chance. We pull the bodyguard. Thanks, Magic. <laughs> you wonder why I'm glad I'm not paying for this crap anymore. And we're going to get trounced. Here comes down to half our life. We'll still do it. Watch this. We really need a priest and something else. Eh, that's not too bad. Soup. Not that it's going to do too much here. The dog shows up. Yep. We'll do that. And a ram through and we're finished again. Ram through makes you think you might be able to build a mono green hexproof. Oh, interesting play here. Maybe they've got a finisher card, probably, like a mask here. Nope, maybe not. Really? That's a lot of respect. Just smash, man. Tron will start using ancient stirrings and moments piece probs. Yep. Yeah, there's, there's no... Um, the biggest point against Tron, and you know, it's just like, hey, what are the best cards in every color? Yeah, put that in the deck. That's like if you're new to Tron, that's what I would tell somebody. It's like, well, that's that's what it's about. We don't have a way to block this, so we're just going to go off to uh, game two. Bring in a COP green, obviously. Prismatic will probably make a start. One, two, and three. We've got kind of our permanence there. I, da, 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 hollow, gut shot. Mm, you know what? Sometimes they might have a, um, a standard bear showing up here. I'll take out a Sentinel's Eyes, a Bone Splitter, a Chow Meadow. Oh. All right, time. We don't need these two. That's really good against control or kill, kill stuff deck. Gut Shot might be pretty cool here. Or Last Breath to stay alive. Or we could just mix it up and go one of each. Um, I'm going to do that. One of each. So if they bring in standard bear, we'll at least be able to do something about it. We got rid of a bone splitter along those same lines. Let's try that. CLP green or Runa protection green. There's that new card. Where was it? Um, hold on a minute. Uh, let's me look at stuff here. Swift response. This is a pretty good little white removal card. Destroy a tap creature for two. I mean, it's way better to journey to know our stuff in this metagame, but um, I, think, I think white's getting enough stuff now. It can, it can get pretty playful. All right, so we got one land. We're going to mulligan again. Where have you heard this before? We got two lands. It feels pretty good. We've got the combo if we draw another land. We'll keep this. We drew what we need here. We're going to say keep. We've got to get rid of something. We're going to get rid of Chow Mano, I think. Now, 
I really hate to get rid of this, but I'm going to I'm going to be proactive and not waiting to lose. They've got standard bear. That'll suck. We'll at least have a critter out. Well, I've been saying for weeks we need to have a kind of a blah outing, and here it is. But make no mistake, I still really like this list. I don't think you should be taking it to a tournament, but it will get you quite a few wins if you don't run into mana issues, which I've been at this a long time. I don't know, at 21 lands, none of them come into play tapped. Why this is having so much trouble with that. You could argue that it's uh, trying to come, you know, um, what do you call it? Not so much Voltron, but it is kind of trying to build something. So you need certain parts. You need a creature. You need a land. You need... So it kind of accentuates when you do miss any of those elements out of your opening. And that being said, there's not too much rhyme or reason outside of that that this old dog sees. But even, even privately, this does seem to where it's just like all lands, no lands, all lands, no lands. It's like, come on, do, do one or the other, please. That way I can... Adjust. All right. We have a bit of a hide here. Do this. We could call Chow Mano on that, call him green, and hope for the best. If we don't draw another land, I can promise you almost we will not draw another land because I have a priest with the solid footing plan right there. So come on now. What did I say? Told you, told you it was going to happen. Right, well, we're going to just move forward with this plan. We'll go like this. We'll wait for Chow Mano here. Never know. They might try to uh, ram through something, and that way we can at least uh, do something. There's no reason to uh, do it right now. Maybe they've got a journey to nowhere. Uh, in that case, we might want to let them have it. <laughs> Ancestral Mask. Now, that kind of sucks because we've got a Chow Mano, which is going to hurt worse, but we're going to at least take two less here because of this pull. All right. Here we go. End of turn. It's going to hurt no matter what. We'll do this. Call green. Okay. Here we are. Chow Mano showing up. Man, that's going to that's gonna make that thing hit so hard, but we're going to do it. Look at, watch it just grow. It's like, rawr. are we going to do ourselves in here? Maybe. We've got them on a two-turn clock. They might have us on a one-turn clock. We'll see. Depends what they've got. they got another mask or ethereal armor. We're just screwed regardless. So, Get rid of a basic add two cycling lands. Well, the problem is uh, we get screwed a lot. So that's the last thing I want to do is uh, have something come into play tapped. And if you got the top of the show, I... Definitely have had versions of up to four of the cycling lands and running like 24 lands just where it's like, okay, I know I'm going to get flooded at 24 and I want to be able to cycle and it still kind of runs into those issues. Woo! All right. Hey, it's a W. Isn't that a weird thing, right? For today anyway. Not for the list. All right. Well, let's go like this. Thankfully, they didn't top deck. Like, it seems like everybody's doing against us today. Hmm. You know what? I'm actually favoring um the last breath play here because we can at least stay alive in a pinch if they have standard bearer. Now that they've seen we have a lot of enchantments that might be coming in a little more obviously now. Solid footing. We have COP green, pretty much. Rune of Protection green and Prismatic. Uh, tch, 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 tch. Yeah. I mean, we can always breath our own bodyguard there. And then that, as the added benefit, it doesn't trip Fengraph later because it's exiled and not in the graveyard. Do, do, do. Winner takes it all here. One and one. Thank you for joining me. I know we've only had one break. We'll roll those something else here. But other than that, if not, we'll win, lose, or draw. We'll see you next week. I believe Terso won a challenge or two ago with a cool little infect list. Hey, it's a de it's a game plan we can get behind. Look at this. Three lands, two creatures, defense, stuff, a little bit of sideboard. 
It's the first good draw of 24 games. All right, we'll keep this. All right, yeah, we did that after we uh, put this in the queue, though, so I think uh, we just added another basic. So after this game, that'll come into play, but for right now, all right, well, we got plenty of defense. Boy, we just really want our uh, swift response to have a swift response and show up top of our deck next would be really nice. As it turns out our mana can get there. We're not susceptible to much hate here. Interesting play. Hmm. Must have a ethereal armor with like a boggle, I would assume. Going to see a 3-3 three, three for a striker or 4-4, four, four, I should say. Oh, never mind. Interesting tempo play off the wilds there. Okay, cool, cool. I actually like that. All right, now I really want to get a swift response. Let's see if they want to block. Hopefully. Highly doubt it. All right. So what we really want to see here is maybe like a standard bearer. And we can just zap it. Unfortunately, we do have to kind of play around that. Double Prismatic, if uh, COP Green shows up. I'm just saying COP Green. I know it's a Rune of Protection Green, but I don't want people to scratch their heads going, huh? Outside of a Fangraph, it's COP Green in this list. Come on, sucker. Let's go. We don't even care about life gain, so hopefully this is an Armadillo Cloak. Nope. It's another critter. Bodyguard's usually never dead. We can at least eat it with our own last breath. Hopefully it is in our last breath and it lets us live for another turn. We got one white floating here by our opponent. Not sure what we're going up against. It's probably ethereal armor. I don't know why the hesitation. Maybe they're getting a drink or something. There it is. Interesting choice. Strange. There's the priest. All right. I'm going to just drop this now. It really works well with prismatic strands. You attack, you tap, you attack, you tap. It's good times. Come on, swift response. Let's go. I can even fengraft back the bodyguard for a double swift response play for five. That'll be ten. We only need two swings with that if we get swift response. Less than two. Come on, come on. What we got? We're going to take a truck of damage here, but then we've got them kind of locked up. Unless they want to sit back and play defense. They've got like an ethereal armor on the unta or on the 1-1 one -one ledge walker. That'll suck unless we get first strike going. Outside of a prismatic strands on in the offense. All right, we're on a two turn clock, but we got prismatic on our side. They might have a dispel, might have flaring pain. There's a lot of options with the abundant growth sitting across from you. Okay. No way to block. Kind of play very slowly here. We do not want to overdo it here with the prismatic in hand. All right. Now then. I see no reason not to play this. I'll just attack here. They know the swift response trick. They might want to block here. They do. I know I played uh, Terso W yesterday a few times with this. I believe I won. I'm sure it was probably two to them, three to me, or something like that, but... You can play them stream, and it's not, it's not that hard of a deck to play. It's just, uh, it's been fighting us all days. We can tell. Hmm. All right. Looking at that, we've got our, okay, we'll just do that then. Strange plays, strange plays about, I tell you. Well, we're going 
gonna run in here. I think we're just gonna use our bodyguard here. Much better option. Especially since we have so many other critters in our hand. We'll say green. Green. Okay. Booyah. We'll take that down a notch. Now if we could disenchant everything, the ledge walker would be dead. We want to keep our options open. You know what? In the off chance... No, that won't work. Let's bring out a Leonin. This is getting interesting. We really need that COP to show up to free up some more mana here. Now they've got double first strike, and we really can't do much of anything on the attack front. First strike working against us here. Two, three, here we go. If they've got an answer, we've got, we can flash it back, but green. This is hell bent, so I'm feeling okay. Vigilance, so we can attack kind of ad nauseum here. Hmm. Curious. Let's get our dudes out. And we bring back that, though. Hmm. I think we just lean on a prismatic play next this turn. We can always uh, shoot our own dude. I don't think it's worth uh, attacking here. Well, no, whatever one gets through, we're going to be able to push through, so let's attack. It's probably gonna, hopefully they go after the priest. So we've got another one for the prismatic play. All right. Let's do this. Take three, pretty far away from it. We've got Prismatic. I might consider doing this main right now in case they do have Flaring Pain and stuff, but if it's Flaring Pain, they've got it either way because they can just flash it back and we've only got the one, so I'd rather them have to tap so we have at least a little semblance of an out. Coming on over for everything. This implies they've got Dispel. Do they got it? Looks like they got something. Oh, it's uh, ram through. Good for them. Yeah, it's so cool with that on the stack. Yeah, that's what I was saying about uh, Prismatic losing a little bit of its uh, online value there. So while that's on the stack, the green damage does go through, and even worse, the trampled damage does go through, and it kills us. So definitely a great card. Good game, Terso W. All right, well, that was pretty brutal. Um, like I said, the only changes I want to make to the list right now is we lose a Fangraph, we add some planes. But as it sits, I mean, the only thing that we beat was a freed from the real kind of combo and uh, reacting to Snap. We lost a real close one to Stompy, but our own deck kind of beat us there. Double lost to Tron, as we saw there. Uh, ran through, rammed home the idea that this needs a little bit more work. But um, I'm, you know, with different matchups and such, I really, really am a fan of this list. I'm going to go over it here real quick uh, for all of you on the outro. We've got uh, 18 basics, 3 Fangraphs, uh, 4 Bodyguards, Chow Mano, and Garamatra's Blessing is kind of our protection package. Zero Armor, Sentinel's Eyes, and Solid Footing is the combo with Priest of the Norn to Corpse Cur to keep coming back, hopefully via the Fangraph. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty cool little deck. Uh, like I said, not turning worthy and stuff, but pretty cool for the uh, ability of... Uh, just kind of a brewer's paradise sort of thing. You're looking at a infect. What's its problem? Well, a lot of times it can't get through. If you've got the early kill, it's usually prevented with fog and stuff. This is it. the little engine that kind of keeps kind of hitting and uh, has a bit of a surprise game now, thanks to solid footing, which we only unfortunately saw about one time. But um, kid you not, play it about four times. You'll see it 
about half that time usually. But anyway, y'all, we'll see you this side, uh, same time, same place next week. Uh, till then, uh, stay safe out there. And uh, this is Deluxe signing off for Propaganda. Adios. Take care. Be safe. Adios. Thank you.